Hello and welcome to another episode of Alex's Afternoon Art Show. Uh, today we are again continuing the uh, Marvel Nemesis stuff. This time we're doing Human Torch. So, uh, in theory, this will be a quick one. <laughs> so, as per usual, I have uh, drawn up my base sketch already. Um, again, this should, in theory, be a quick one because I don't actually really have to do any detailing. All I have to do is follow my lines and then, you know, move on from there. But, um, yeah, this, this should be fast, but again, I do have to draw fire, and fire may take a minute. So, yeah, we'll just kind of get in, I think, and, and see what we can do. I mean, reference images aren't really going to help me very much here because, again, he's just, he's just an orange man. That's it. That's all there is to it. You know, I think there's definitely more you can do with the Human Torch than just make him a burning man. In terms of design, that is. Uh, because here, that's all they've really done is they've just made him an orange man. I feel like, yeah, they've kind of... I mean, again, this is Marvel Nemesis that we're talking about, so we're not exactly going to see many inspired design choices. But, yeah, I feel like... There's something they probably could have done uh, to make this a design. Rather than just, yeah, having an orange burning man. Because, yeah, there's not really much going on here. Um, but, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, it's a bit of an auto. As you can probably tell, uh, this has been uh, recorded only a little while after um, I did the Spider Man one. Um, but yeah, only a little while after I recorded the Spider-Man one because um, this really shouldn't take very long and the Spider-Man one I kind of expected to take a little longer so I decided to just do these in the same day. Um, and yeah, they, this, this should be fast. There's no reason it, it shouldn't be fast other than, you know, some supreme screw up. That's the only reason I can see it taking any longer than, like, half an hour. Because <laughs> I'm not going to be doing any dots on him. That wouldn't make any sense. I'm literally just going to be doing the lines. And then, uh, mm, And then coloring him. He's not even really going to have any shading going on. Oops. Yeah, I mean... This should, in theory, be very fast. Again, in theory. I feel like the more I say this, the more I expect it not to happen. The more I expect this to, to actually be a real shocker and end up taking, like, four hours. I really, it doesn't take four hours. I'd be kind of mad if it did. Got other things to be doing in my time. I'm drawing a human torch. Despite my saying that uh, I would not really be <laughs> needing to have reference open for this one, I do, just I suppose as a precaution more than anything else, have, uh, I suppose it's probably more for color, but yeah, I do have a reference image open of Human Torch for Marvel Nemesis. And it's odd to me how... Um, so I believe, I'm pretty certain Human Torch was one of those characters that was only on the console version as well. Uh, I don't believe he was on any of the other... He might have been on one or two of the other versions, but I don't know. He, uh, he wasn't on the PSP version, I know that much. Um, 
but yeah. Um, looking at Jay Lee's art for Human Torch, it's a case of where that same issue that I brought up with Venom, of where he looks kind of weird and crinkly, is also here. So I don't know what the story is, but for whatever reason, Jay Lee kept drawing these characters to look weird and wrinkly. And again, I don't know. I don't know what the story is, because I mean, it, I suppose it fits with the game's kind of weird, creepy aesthetic to make all the characters look kind of weird and crinkly and old, but it's a bit of an odd decision nevertheless. And, um, yeah, I mean, in the series, I know that we did comment on one particular piece of art for Human Torch. Which is very much not the piece of art that I'm using as reference right now because that art is uh, it's a little intense on certain things, but yeah, um, namely his face, it looks kind of weird, but um, yeah, anyways, um, that, that weird little issue from Venom is still present, so I'm not really sure what kind of caused that, that I suppose decision it clearly must be a decision to make these characters kind of like crinkly but I'm not quite sure what that decision or what brought about that decision because uh, yeah like it is it is an odd one but yeah that's all of our basic details done um, so now we have to start drawing in the fire which, yeah, will be kind of... can be very fast or, or take forever, again. So, it's the case of where whenever I draw fire, I, uh, I vary line weight quite heavily. Um, and yeah, this is something I suppose you'll, you'll see here is that, yeah, it can make your fire look a bit strange initially. Um, it's the same kind of principles that I suppose you would use maybe whenever you're drawing smoke is to kind of vary the line weight and just kind of have things kind of I suppose just go go off and randomly kind of intersect again and stuff like this and yeah I mean it's fine to have little bits of overlapping and stuff like that because Again, it's supposed to look kind of unpredictable. You don't want it to, to, to conform too much to any one shape in particular. So it's a case of where you want it to kind of just come flailing out from everywhere. Uh, but yeah, since fire rises, you would want the kind of upper part of him to have more fire on him than the uh, the underside. So there'll still be these little bits kind of coiling off and uh, and coming out like this and everything, but it wouldn't be quite as much as the uh, the upper part. So this will even kind of apply to his sides, I suppose. You'll still have bits which will kind of fight to come back off and and go up, but. It won't be quite as, yeah, as I say, intense as it would be on the upper part. And we're not even going to bother having any separation in between the legs, because naturally the fire there would just kind of all mush together. Um, but yeah. So. Since he's supposed to be kind of getting propelled by the fire, the fire will just kind of go off screen at the bottom there. So there are going to be some tricks which I'll employ to make the fire look a little bit more like fire whenever we're uh, whenever we're getting into the, the colors. Because, yeah, that will be a lot of kind of effects and stuff like that to, to be put on to, to, yeah, to make things look a little bit better there. In that way. Alright, there's all the lines for our fire. Um, 
So that's that part done. Now, we aren't doing dots, so we're just jumping straight over to colors. Um, and yeah, that will kind of probably get kind of blasted through reasonably fast, I'd reckon, because there's really only one color, and that's orange. But, whoops, uh, accidentally went into the effects there, because it's all double click for some bloody reason. But yeah, so, what we're going to do is, um, We're going to have his inner color be a kind of a lighter color. So I think we are going to have shading in a sense, but I'm literally just going to be using my my black and white, I think, for him. Uh, actually, no, I don't think I'll be using lights for my uh, my shading. I think I'll only use darks because that's the only stuff that really needs emphasize. The rest you'll see in effects. So. I'm making kind of a, a fairly bright orange, I think, for his, um, his inner color. I'm going to want it to even kind of verge on the yellow scale. Um, you can bring it up a little more. So it's kind of yellow, but it's still orange. So we're going to want to make this size 30. Uh, his eyes are actually going to want to be a different color, but we'll do that. In a minute. Okay, just very quickly put in those eyes because they are a different color, so I'll just write it in as eyes. Just write it in his eyes. Um, and now we'll make them basically white, because that's what they're like. And yep, they're all good. So, now, here is my harebrained scheme. So, uh, my camera looks like it's lagging a little bit, but yeah, I don't know. It's getting very dark in here all of a sudden, so I'll try and make the rest of this very quick so that it doesn't, uh, so that I don't have to put on a light in this room. But, yeah. So, the scheme is, I should say it first, the scheme is that, um, I should even do this now. So, we're going to create an inner glow, which we're going to set to be normal. And we're going to set, actually no, this is on the wrong layer, isn't it? No, it's on the right layer, good. And so we're going to set this inner glow to be a very uh, reddish kind of orange. A very electric and reddish uh, kind of orange. And then we're going to make it just a... We're, we're only going to want it a little bit. But we're going to want it enough of where... Uh, the, we can see it spreading around a little bit. So we're getting this kind of volume off of him now, which is good. This is what we want. And so we're also going to want to do a bit of an outer glow as well, of the same kind of color. So outer glow. Um, uh, we're going to want to set that to be a normal. We're going to want to set that to be. Uh, mm, mm. Can't really grab it all that effectively, but. We're going to want the outer glow to also be this kind of reddish, uh, this, yeah, this kind of reddish orange. Maybe even not quite as red as that. And so we're just going to want to have a touch of it. We're not going to want quite as much. I'm going to want to zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing here. We're going to want a, a little tiny little touch of it because we don't want to overdo it. Because again, it will go over our eyes, which isn't what we want. We're going to want to lower the spread of that and uh, gonna make it a little bit, just a little bit. Um, so that, yeah, it's not going over our eyes. Because, yeah, again, we are going to be coloring in our fire. So we do want a little bit, not much, a little bit. We only want a tiny little bit of it because, yeah, otherwise it'll end up looking a little weird. But yeah, we're just going to very quickly throw in a touch of shading on this by 
basically putting a shading layer only on our orange because we're still going to be doing the fire afterwards and we don't want our orange. Uh, we don't want any shading on that naturally. So we'll just do this very quickly and just a little bit of it in, in the places where you'd expect there to be shading. Like a little bit under the eyes, stuff like that. A little bit under the nostrils. Just a touch under the lip. Again, there's no need to be precise with this type of shading because it's just kind of going to be going everywhere anyways. Um, so, we just kind of want to throw it a little bit everywhere. Just so that we're getting those little bits of shading in that we want in. Okay, so there we go. I think we've got our little bit of shading in hell. I might even turn down the opacity on it a little bit more so it's it's a little bit more subtle than that. Yeah, I think 25% is a little bit more acceptable. But, yeah. So, now, our next color is our fire. And that's going to be behind everything. And so, the fire is going to basically be yellow. Uh, we're going to want it to be a very bright color so that whenever our darker goes on it that it um, it works a little bit better so we're going to want to be a, a very kind of like golden warm yellow and yeah a kind of a very bright color in a sense and so this should work again we're going to just kind of try and speed through this the hard part is always the edges on this type of stuff because again the edges are supposed to be kind of a unpredictable color, uh, an unpredictable shape, so the kind of the coloring of those edges is a bit of a pain. Well, I'm not really too worried about going over the lines here because we're going to be using outer glow, so it will end up creating that effect regardless of what we do. So I'm not really all that worried about going over the lines here. I'm just kind of running along with it and, um, and yeah, just kind of filling it in and yeah again if we miss spots they'll get filled in by the glow so we shouldn't really worry too too much about it. Very white now on camera. Jeez. I gotta do a little bit of hot fixing here to change what's going on with my face here, because uh, I don't think I should look this b this bright. There we go. That should do it. <coughs> now the colors are a little bit more acceptable. Ay, ay, ay. I was hoping that this would be done before it started getting this kind of way, but no such luck it seems. Okay, so we got the base, the basis for the fire in there. Now we're going to do basically the same method we did before. Before, so we're going to get our outer glow. Well, actually, we're going to do the inner glow first. Uh, we're going to set this to be normal. And then we're going to get it to be a pretty kind of a, a, a bit of a darker orange kind of color, a bit more of a richer. Not quite as reddish as his inside, but something kind of like that. And we're going to want this inner glow to be a little bit more intense. We want the kind of softness to it, of the blend. Yeah, we want something kind of like that with the softness. Okay, so we got to get back in there so we can touch up our outer glow now. Okay, set this one to be normal as well. And then we will do this. And then we'll get it to be the kind of the reddish color again. Make it very kind of vivid, make it very bright. And then let's 
spread this out. Yeah, we don't want it to spread too much. We want it to be within reason. A kind of a soft spread. Hmm. Something I guess maybe a little bit more like that. Maybe even a little less. We didn't bring down our size a touch more. Bring up the spread a little bit. This is the thing when you're doing these kind of fire effects, is it's really just all tinkering and little bits like this, these little effects to kind of bring it out a little bit more. And so what we're going to do here very briefly is we're just going to have these little kind of uh, little embers coming off. kind of adds a little bit more to the effect. It'll look better in the long run with these kind of little things going off. Now realistically, based on the fact that there is motion involved here, there wouldn't really be all that visible embers. Yeah, you know, we've got light coming in now through the window, so I'm, I'm gonna try and wrap up a little bit. But yeah, naturally in a kind of a scene like this, you wouldn't be seeing very much in terms of kind of these, uh, these embers, because there is motion involved, you're seeing the kind of the fire coming up from the bottom, so you wouldn't really be seeing stuff like that here. But yeah, so I'm gonna very quickly uh, grab the background because we've got basically the whole thing done, um, and then we'll do our gradient maps very very fast because again, no light line naturally. So yeah, okay, there's our background. That's now in. Throw on our texture. Grab our Radiant map, throw that over, put it in. It's not a it's not a looker. It's still not a looker. It does not do any service to this. So actually there was one thing I need to put in. I do need to actually sign it. <laughs> I do need to do that. Ever so quickly. then we shall do our own gradient map. Oh, I did it on the detail layer, who cares. Actually, no, I'm gonna wanna take that off. <laughs> I'm gonna wanna make a new layer. Ugh, this is why it's always handy to have this. This good old tool here. The lasso tool, it always saves my ass whenever I make those little mistakes. So. Now, we're making our own gradient map, and naturally it's going to be very orange, because I mean, what else would it be, really? Uh, we're doing a character who is only orange, so I mean, what other type of color would we use than orange? Because again, you always want to use a gradient map that services your colors, not, uh, not one that just services to create a theme. Again. Okay, yeah, this one's naturally going to be quite intense because of the the brightness of the colors that we used. So yeah, this one's a bit of a vibrant one. Um, but yeah, that kind of does it. But yeah, as I was saying there before, I kind of interrupted myself. Um, you always want to use a gradient map that services the colors, not necessarily one that services just to create a theme. I mean, you can use one that does that, but you should always try and alter it to fit your colors at the very least. I'm getting quite a bit of uh, lag on uh, on my camera here, so I don't know what that's about. I don't know if it's uh, if it's just being overworked or something today. But yeah, um, so what have we covered? We have covered um, fire mainly. That's really all we've really talked about. We talked a little bit about how again there's some odd little kind of overlap between like the little things between each of these designs and stuff like that which just serves to make them look a bit strange but yeah um, I believe that's it 
all in all, this has been a very short one. We're not even a full hour in. Um, and yeah, thankfully these are starting to get a little faster uh, now. But yeah, uh, if you like the video, do what you normally do. Uh, like and subscribe and all that. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, my voice is a little tired today from having done two of these. Um, but yeah, um, I believe that's it. Hair in my mouth. Nice. Nice way to end the video. <laughs> Ugh. But yeah. Uh, bye bye.